most of a nation slept in racial inequality, one small girl in Selma, Alabama, rose to break the bonds of oppression, one step at a time. The nation's smallest freedom fighter. 1965, Cheyenne Webb, Selma, Alabama. A combination of the right person at the right time for civil rights change. Cheyenne Webb grew up in a town that embodied the history of black America. This history of heartache ranged over the centuries from the first slave who arrived on the shores of Virginia in 1619 to Jim Crow laws supporting segregation after the Civil War. American history did not favor justice for the African American. Even in the 1950s and 60s, as injustices against blacks began to garner attention, they still felt the repercussions of years of prejudice. From Fort Scott, I rode the bus in any position or any seat that mm -hmm. I wanted to sit in. And uh, I was stationed in San Antonio, Texas. When we got to Dallas, we had to change buses. It was the first time that I saw the sign that said, Colored. Institutions like the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee tried to destroy this prejudice many African Americans felt and advance civil rights in the South. However, in some Southern states, like Alabama, one intrinsic right was still denied, the right to vote. Black activist groups identified Selma, Alabama as a prime location for voting equality marches for two reasons. First, less than 5% of blacks in Selma were registered to vote. Second, leaders believed that Selma's Sheriff Jim Clark, a volatile segregationist, would overreact to protest and create publicity for their cause. In late 1964, leaders of the Dallas County Voters League in Selma recognized that the recently passed Civil Rights Act of 1964 had not impacted Selma. At the courthouse, black voters were continuously turned away by random tests or impossible questions not presented to white voters. African American leaders asked Dr. Martin Luther King to aid their movement. While adults in Selma were beginning to seek change, Cheyenne was an 8-year-old 3rd grade student in Mrs. Louise Bright's class in a segregated elementary. She was just a young girl, wearing pigtails and rivets in her hair. But even at her young age, she was inquisitive about civil rights, influenced by her older sister Vivian, who had participated in demonstrations. Cheyenne was captivated by Dr. King. When she was in 3rd grade, she wrote a paper on him about how he was changing the laws to help black people. He was her hero from then on. January 11, 1965 started as an ordinary day. Cheyenne packed her lunch, tied ribbons in her pigtails, and ran off to meet her best friend Rachel. It was one rare situation on my way to school one day, and I saw black and white people mingling together, something that was very unusual. I began to cross back over to the church and follow them, and when I followed them into the church, I sat in the back of Brown's Chapel AME Church and observed and listened and as much as I could, but I still didn't quite understand what was happening. After sitting for five hours, Cheyenne went home and asked her parents why they couldn't vote. Afraid of losing their jobs, her parents told her that she didn't understand the movement and that she shouldn't get involved. But following her sister's example, she continued to attend meetings. Even though Vivian moved away, Cheyenne wanted to be like her sister, standing up for her beliefs and fighting for equal rights. Sometimes, she skipped school to attend meetings at Brown Chapel with teenagers who were friends of her sister. One evening, Cheyenne was introduced to Hosea Williams, who asked her if she could sing and began to practice freedom songs with her. This made her feel as though she was a real part of the cause. Many times after this, Cheyenne led members of Brown Chapel in singing freedom songs like her favorite, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around. Dr. King noticed Cheyenne and gave her a personal nickname, the smallest freedom fighter. Cheyenne began to participate in downtown marches with Dr. King. She found a friend and teacher Mrs. Margaret Moore, who was often at the meetings and encouraged Cheyenne to keep on attending. The protesters marched on the courthouse frequently, which infuriated Sheriff Clark. On January 22, 1965, Dr. King organized over 100 school teachers, including Mrs. Bright, Cheyenne's teacher, and Mrs. Margaret Moore, who marched on the courthouse to protest unfair voter registration practices. Sheriff Clark had to allow some teachers to register or else they all would have quit teaching. That, that was, just even getting that far was a victory for, for uh, uh, black people and for civil rights in America. After victories like this, the marchers celebrated at Brown Chapel. Cheyenne was occasionally escorted home from these meetings by Jesse Jackson. 
Cheyenne had been talking with her parents, sharing her experiences at the meetings. When asked what she wanted for her ninth birthday, Cheyenne promptly asked her parents to try to register to vote. Though they were turned away at the courthouse, a catalyst for voting rights change was coming soon. On February 18th, during a peaceful nighttime demonstration in Marion, Alabama, a mere seven miles from Selma, a young voter registrar named Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot in the stomach as he tried to defend his grandfather from club-wheeling police. He died seven days later. Activist leaders in Selma organized a mass march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama to protest his death. Cheyenne joined 600 peaceful marchers on Sunday, March 7, 1965, in front of Brown Chapel AME without her best friend Rachel and without her parents. Led by John Lewis and Hosea Williams, they began the trek as Cheyenne held tightly to Mrs. Moore. The selected route traveled through downtown Selma, over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, an ironic embodiment of Southern tradition named after Confederate General. Then the route followed Highway 80 on 54 miles to Montgomery. The marchers went through the downtown safely, but when they reached the crest of the bridge, they saw hundreds of policemen, billy clubs, and dogs, all led by Sheriff Jim Clark. Anger overtook him. He shouted on a megaphone, telling the marchers to turn back. When they merely stood, the policemen attacked. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. During the melee, Hosea Williams snatched up Cheyenne and ran with her back to Brown Chapel. Sixteen people were hospitalized, and many others were injured from the billy clubs and tear gas. Dr. King invited sympathetic men and women to join and start another march to Montgomery. Over 4,000 people responded initially. The Selma to Montgomery march was planned on Sunday, March 21st. Cheyenne convinced her friend Rachel to march with her. At the Capitol, she witnessed Dr. King's famous speech, How Long? Not Long. Before six months went by, Cheyenne saw President Johnson sign the Voting Rights Act of 1965 into law. She witnessed his historic words, a new victory in the struggle for civil rights. At times, history and fate meet at a single time, in a single place, to shape a turning point in man's unending search for freedom. So it was at Lexington and Concord. So it was a century ago at Appomattox. So it was last week in Selma, Alabama. Soon after this, Cheyenne watched her parents register to vote. One check mark on the voting ballot symbolized a year of protest and courage for Cheyenne. She saw Dr. King leave Selma and wept when the nation heard of his murder a year later. Although Cheyenne Webb was very young and just one individual fighter, she illustrated tremendous values of courage and determination in the face of adversity. Because of Cheyenne and the other marchers' actions, 9,000 black men and women in Selma alone registered to vote within the next year. Sheriff Jim Clark was ousted in the next election, and many African Americans took office. Cheyenne acted. She chose to march when marching was dangerous. She sang in Brown Chapel in celebration and encouragement. She brought other people, like Mrs. Bright and Rachel, to the marches. She influenced her parents to register to vote. Cheyenne acted, and people around her were positively changed. In 1979, Cheyenne wrote a book about her actions, entitled Selma Lord, Selma. The book was made into a movie in 1999. Cheyenne travels across the country, speaking to groups about her life, her actions, and the lasting impact of Selma. She leaves a legacy for every voter, young and old, black and white. In word and in deed, the smallest freedom fighter still fights. But we would pray and sing, come by here, my Lord, come by here. Somebody needs you, Lord, come by here. Oh, Lord, don't leave me. They ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking and keep on talking, walking up to freedom land. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. And I'll go home to my Lord and be free.